hold on a minute. I'm trying to figure out if I can do a co-host on my devices. I'm not sure if this can be done. Don't think it will work. Your online friends will appear here. They're not appearing, so this doesn't work. And all right, I was just experimenting if I could do a could do a co-host or something. It didn't work. I suppose I'll uh, have to figure out how to do that some other time. Hi, this is the Great Johanna speaking. I'm just doing my uh, regular live stream as I do almost every evening nowadays. If you have any questions for me, just throw them at me. I didn't prepare any topic, so I suppose I'll just start talking and who knows? Uh, who knows what I'll end up talking about? I was working on my new track today my because uh, I'm a part-time musician. Uh, let's see if there's some interesting news on the on the on the feedly. I've been having internet connections over over and over, but you know you know the uh, the anti-racism is clearly anti-white racism, right? Everywhere that you hear this talk of uh, we need to make things more diverse, what they really mean is we need to get rid of more white people and replace them with with others. And I was also thinking about this today. I think I made a video about it. Like, where does this come from? This this jealousy it's more than jealousy it's what we in dutch call night it's a sort of you know deeply rooted psychological hatred for other people who have more and then i realized of course that uh, during the industrial age the europeans made leaps in technological advances right uh, let me adjust my microphone for a little bit so the european people they started with the uh, with the industrial age was uh, which gave us uh, mass uh, luxury goods mass products to produce for ourselves right and others we could sell it to the world basically all of a sudden we had wealth and technology and uh, all sorts of luxury items that were never for sale before all of a sudden you could just buy them if you wanted to have them right yeah my hat is in the hat box normally i don't wear it indoors <laughs> But yeah, maybe I should make a habit of keeping it on for my uh, for my live streams. Yeah, so you know what I was what I was talking about is uh, uh, what happens when you're Europe and you invent the industrial age. Do you think that the other people will be happy and that they will want to learn from you and they will learn your technology and so they can do it too? No, <laughs> they will be full of jealousy and hatred and envy that was the word i was looking for with they will, they will be full of envy and their goal will be to either take over what you have take away from you what you have or destroy you if they cannot replicate what you have and so my point is any time in human history when one group of people manages to advance themselves as soon as the word starts to spread in the territories around or globally and it's in our case People will not respond with happiness and kindness and support. No, they will be deeply, deeply jealous and, and uh, uh, absolutely hateful because, uh, you know, if you think of the psychology of human beings, uh, what people, uh, you know, people suffering feelings of envy, uh, they, why do they feel that in the first place? If you feel some deeply rooted envy for rich people, for example, it may be because you feel you thought you were superior and then you meet people who are who are who have a lot more than you do. And you cannot really explain that to yourself, you know, uh, and so you think to yourself, oh, well, those other people must have taken something from me that they're not allowed to have or. And this is the argument that most black people from Central Central Africa always give you. Oh, Europeans stole the resources, the resources. Um, no, the re Europeans had the skill to do something with those resources and you didn't have that skill. Europeans built the factories, you didn't build the factories. Europeans built supply lines, you didn't build supply lines. So there's a lot more to it than just some dumb piece of cobalt in your soil. You also need to have a reason to use it. And Africans had no such reason because they invented nothing. You know, and so, but they cannot, they cannot process this. They are basically drowning in envy, losing their minds over envy that Europe has all this stuff, 
because Europeans developed the competencies and the skill, you know, and the intelligence and the knowledge to have a use for all these resources. And, uh, but, but the envy will not go away. A rational explanation will not explain the envy away. The envious people, they will not rest until they have got what you have or until they have destroyed what you have. Either way, so it doesn't matter that much, you know, because, it, because it's an emotional problem and it can be solved either by destroying the object of your hatred and the object, the object of your envy, uh, or it can be perhaps uh, resolved by stealing the actual products from the Europeans, basically. Uh, a lot of Arab Africans in my comment section actually say that. They say they want to come to Europe to steal back what was stolen from them. Even though, you know, you want your cobalt, you know, you want your sand, you can have it back, you know. You know uh, but what they want, of course, is the iPhone. What they want is the house and the car. What, how come Africa today does not have a car manufactured industry? The USA has it. Uh, China has it, right? Europe has a car industry. How come Africa does not have a car industry? Why don't they produce their own cars? They've got all the resources. Why don't they build these these industries? Uh, there's a lack of competence here, um, especially if you are already drowning in envy anyway. If you are such an emotional creature that you uh, you cannot set your emotions aside and start working on your skills and your knowledge and so on to build something up. Basically, you're already admitting that you know you will never be able to have that on your own. You know, unless Europeans or Chinese people build you a car industry, you are never going to have it because there's a lack of competency among your people. But instead of admitting to that and working on it, no, you better better accuse Europeans of everything, right? Because Europeans have cars, but they didn't steal the cars from the Africans. Europeans have cell phones, they didn't steal those from the Africans, right? Uh, and Europeans, of course, are more than willing or have been more than willing to sell all these things, all these products, all these services to the Africans. You know, they, we have our, li our libraries are public, you know. You can look everything up, all the technology, all the manuals, all the blueprints, all the patents. You can study all of it and basically replicate what the Europeans have done. Either you don't want to do that because it's too, too much effort or you're not able to do it, right? Or you think that maybe <clears throat> simply, you know, demanding that white people take the knee or something for Black Lives Matter. Maybe you think that's the better approach. And you see that's exactly what they do. They choose the, the, the weak man strategy, basically trying to manipulate other people <clears throat> with, with negative feelings and so on. You know? So, you know, whatever, whatever it is, uh, envy is the key driver here in, in, in all the jealousy of all these people, including, for example, Middle Eastern people. Uh, but, but look at what the Chinese did. The Chinese are so different. The Chinese actually did study Western equipment and Western products. Re remember when we always used to say the Chinese used to copy what we did? Yes, but they were copying. They were dissecting these things, building them up, right? And through their experience in manufacturing, because of Europeans outsourcing so much, they actually beat us now. I think Chinese are now capable of producing more advanced technology than, say, Germany or the USA. And that's just good for them, right? But why aren't the Africans doing this, right? Well, you know, there's a skill issue. You know, what else? You know, the thing with... Um, uh, with the Asians is they never allowed themselves to drown in envy instead of being so emotionally upset about the fact that Europeans have this technological advancement the Chinese simply studied what the Europeans were doing you know there's there's only one other place outside of uh, the Western world <clears throat> outside of the Western world where people perform uh, Wagner's operas and it's in China in China, the Chinese built operas uh, by the Western model because Chinese people have their own operas, which is very, very different, right? But they also build the modern Western type of opera and they start performing Western operas like Wagner's or, and so on. And they, they perform them with Chinese singers singing in German. There's something about the Chinese, about Asians, is, is their willingness to learn. Right? They absorb the European culture. They even enjoy it to a large degree. Right? They do not drown themselves in envy. 
and this is exactly what what people from the from the Muslim world do and from the Af African world they do they are they are prisoners of their own emotions their emotions make it impossible for them uh, to actually learn from the West so instead of learning and copying and then figuring out how to advance on your own they simply cry like little babies like children you know crying their their eyes out like you know you know, if you say if you if you say to a black man that the reason you don't want to be around them is be is because they're so aggressive, their response is with tears in their eyes, like you know, say that to my face, and I'm gonna kill you, I'm gonna kill you, damn you, I'm gonna kill you. You know, that's the reason. You know, you know, you you don't say that. You know, if you would say something like this to Asian people, like the, the reason I don't like to be with Asian people is yada da da da, then the Asian people may actually do some self reflection and say to themselves, you know, you're partly right about this, and this is indeed so and so. It's a very different attitude, you know. I don't think things are changing in Africa because you have that people, you know. These people are just way more emotional and somehow their emotions prevent them from learning or maybe they're not, they're not even capable of learning. Whatever, whatever it is, that's not going to change in the long term. What is going to happen, of course, is that China is going to take over Africa. China is colonizing Africa. They're always so mad at the colonialism of the Europeans, but the Chinese are right, doing it right now under, underneath their noses, and they, they seem to be fine with it because, you know, what choice do they have? You know, they don't have no choice. They're hard workers. Take Vietnam, for example. Yeah, well, hard work is one thing, but, you know, you also have to have the intelligence of building these highly complex, highly complex organizations and structures. And what they do in the Western world is, you know, they use affirmative action to get people into positions of power and prestige and authority, right? At, at one university, I think it was at Yale even, they start giving minority students A's and A-pluses no matter what they do. Regardless of the quality of the work, they just give them A-pluses. Would you ever want to hire anybody from a university that just randomly passes everybody? You know, you wouldn't want that because... The whole idea of, of testing and, and schooling and so on is that you actually become capable of what you say you are capable of. And if they simply gave you a diploma for being black or they gave you a diploma because you had a frizz, right? And then you think you can be a surgeon and save somebody with heart problems? Probably not. You're probably going to kill a lot of people. And I'm, I'm going to wonder, wonder, like, how long will it take before the U.S. economy takes this hit, be before diversity becomes an economic liability, right? Because, you know, if you have to keep lowering the standards that you set for white people, but you have to lower them for minorities, right, and then expect that everything will be fine, you're dead wrong. You know you're wrong. You know that's not going to work. You know, you know that if you give random people, um, you know, surgeons degrees, and you allow them to operate on patients, they're going to die. You know, you're not actually competent. You don't actually know how to operate on human beings. But this is exactly what they're doing in the United States. It's just so unbelievably insane. They have this false concept of, oh, the only reason why we don't have black surgeons in the USA as many is because of racism, because of whatever, because the examination committee must be racist. And in reality, of course, there's just not that many competent black surgeons. And you don't want to give incompetent people surgeons degrees. You don't want incompetent surgeons. They have to be filtered out. And if you can't do it, then you can't do it. This isn't racism. <laughs> this, is, this is common fucking sense, you know. And that's a strange thing, you know. Yeah, I think so that uh, 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 the U.S. economy is already taking that, that diversity hit. Yeah, but... Uh, how long will it take for them to admit it, you know? It's like, oh, shit, you know, we can't actually use this 13% for 60%, you know, the 1350. We can't actually use them. Uh, we can't just pretend that, you know, Steven Spielberg, for example, he's a Jewish director, but he's very good at it, right? But would you have a random black director mess up a $500, billion, a $500 million movie budget just because you, you wanted him to succeed? This is just, just, just not how it works. There's a lot of manifestation going on in the Western world, and that is perhaps a problem of the Western leadership. The Western leaders, the managers and so on, and the CEOs and whatever, I think privately they believe in witchcraft and, and, and manifestation or whatever, and, but by which I mean that it doesn't work. 
they're, they're all they're really doing is manipulating the narrative, but they're not actually improving or changing the reality. And that, you see that very often among leftists. To them, to a leftist, everything is words. And they think if you change the words, it becomes real. And so they start policing your words. So this is why leftists love uh, speech sorry, speech laws, because they think that by, by banning certain speech or by prohibiting certain speech, they make things go away. But of course not. Of course it doesn't go away. Problems don't go away just because you stop talking about them. I think that is also very, in some way, a very feminine thing. You know, women also do that. I don't know if you've, if you've ever personally experienced this, but women would say, you know, they try to solve problems by changing the narrative, by, by not talking about something or by talking about something else, right? And so simply ignoring the verbal reality as though that would be enough to actually change it, but it's not. Out of mind does not mean out of sight, right? It's, it's still right there in front of you. You can ignore it all you want, but it's not going to go away just because you don't want to talk about it. The re reality, I believe is something more than just words you know the reality we live in is also physical but the, the physical domain is the domain of male masculine competence of men who become carpenters and, and masons and who actually know how to build things you know electricians whatever you know people who actually know how to work with their hands to manipulate the reality they are um you know, you can do that without speaking. You can literally not speak at all and spend a year of your life uh, building a, uh, an advanced, you know, a, bi uh, a massive log cabin in the woods somewhere without speaking to, without speaking a word to any human being. You might be able to do it. And so there's a difference here between the world of words and the world of the physical competencies. If you specialize in uh, being a good talker, but you ignore your your skills in dealing with the physical world, basically if you disconnect words from reality, then no matter what you say, nothing is going to change, you know? Uh, and I think, I think that is the, the, the large problem with uh, the American leadership. It is so, they have really, really fallen for the scam of manifestation by thinking like, if only we control the narratives in the media and the newspapers and the social media, and if we prohibit speech with speech laws, right, hate speech laws, that's what they're trying to do in, in Ireland now, right? They want to pass uh, these very restrictive hate speech laws that allow the government to look at your WhatsApp messages. And if you don't want to give the government your password to your cell phone, then you can go to jail for 12 months simply for not giving them the password. This is how extreme it is. And of course, if they catch you with uh, hate speech on your phone with a pay pay meme, you can go to jail for three years or more, right? I mean, at some point, it's just, it's just absolutely <laughs> surgeons. Yeah, all right. Although, I, I mean, at some point, it's just absolutely crazy that um, the disconnect, that they don't notice it, they don't realize it, that the, the, the leadership in the, in, in the Western world don't seem to notice that you need something more than just words. They did that with Russia for the past two years over and over again. We were listening to these words in the newspaper saying that, oh, the Russians are losing. Oh, their offensive is failing. Oh, the counteroffensive is working. Oh, we're gaining ground. Right? You, they keep saying the words that we are winning. We are winning. We, the West, are winning. We are the Western world and we are still winning. And then after two years of war, the you know, the effect of it was that Russia won. That's odd, isn't it? Same thing they did with, with Donald Trump in 2016. All the media kept saying that Trump is losing, Trump is losing, Trump is not winning, Trump is down in this and that poll, poll numbers are down, Trump is this and so and such and such. And they were in complete and total denial about the reality of the fact that people were turning out for Trump and not for, for Hillary. So Trump won, right? So they had to steal the or rig the election. I think they rigged it through the through the postal mail. Really, they simply waited for election day. They counted all the votes normally, and then they realized, okay, Biden needs six million more votes, and then they just printed six million votes, or they pre-printed them, and they just shipped them in with the, with the postal services. You know, that you know the famous Biden jump. I don't know if you ever saw that graph, the Biden jump. You know, that's what's going on. Yeah. Yeah, Conor McGregor should be the 
<laughs> the leader of Ireland, perhaps uh, perhaps he would be a better leader than uh, the crackpot jokers that we have now. Yeah? All right, let me see. Uh, I'm opening my comment section here to see if uh, there's any more to talk about, you know. Anyway, you know, I think I'm trying to reason through, okay, what should what should happen in the Western world then for things to truly change? If you think that you can just make black people more successful just by giving them the p diplomas that they didn't earn and then giving them the jobs that they didn't deserve and you, you expect to survive as a nation, you're out of your goddamn mind. It was never about merely discrimination because the thing being discriminated upon was competency and not words. You know, right? And that's something they don't want to hear, you know? I, uh, I saw a teaser. I saw a teaser from uh, uh, some movie called Civil War. Hold on a minute. Uh, there, there's going to be a new movie also called Civil War. There, there, there's been other movies uh, named that way. But the movie Civil War is going to be about basically Americans fighting each other, right? And now in the in the teaser, you see the the same the same political message that you see everywhere. You see a a, a, a white woman and her diverse friends are you know picking taking up arms against uh, the white men. White men, yeah. The white men are going to be the bad guys in the Civil War. I didn't think so. They're going to be the good guys in the Civil War. You know, it's not like. You know, the diversity hires are the real problem here, you know. It's not too late for Europe. We can do so many different things in Europe. You know, if you if you if you simply allow yourself to think big and think radically, you know, we can we can literally attack the the, uh, the energy supply in Europe. You can surround the cities. You know, you can uh, do something to the climate to make Europe cold if the. Um, if the Atlantic stream is disrupted somehow, then the warm wind blowing out, meaning there's cold wind coming from Canada toward Europe, and it is heated up over the Atlantic Ocean. If you if you disrupt that, Europe will freeze over. You will have your, you will have your frost punk, you know, frost punk reality here. You know, the numbers don't matter. Blah blah. Only 61 percent white in 2023. That's not the issue. Uh, the thing with the United States is, the thing with these people is, you don't have to stay a part of the United States. You can dissolve the nation, cut loose, separate, segregate, wherever you want. All these options are available to you. You just need to figure out what you are going to do and what you think you can defend. What can you conquer and what can you defend? And if you answer those questions, perhaps, perhaps you will have to secede some territory. Maybe the southern states of the U.S. will fall into the hands of either African Americans or Mexicans or Latino, or whatever, and you just cut loose from them. You, it's, it's just like a relationship. You don't have to stay in an abusive relationship. You don't have to stay in a uh, you know, any kind of situation that doesn't benefit you, there's no reason, no real reason why white Americans would, ha would have to suffer the humiliations of, uh, of their diversitopia if they could just walk out, just walk out, cut loose. You could, for example, unite the white U.S. citizens with the white Canadians, and then you have a fairly large group. In fact, you might still be a minor uh, majority. Uh, you have a fairly large group, and you can do whatever the hell you want. You just have to do it. You just need the leadership to do it. And that's all, you know. Uh, you might want to understand that the billionaire class opposes your, uh, heavily opposes your uh, your interests. They're not on your side. Maybe Trump is somewhat, kind of, right? But the majority of the billionaires, they vote Democrat for a reason. Uh, they're not on your side, you know. Yeah, Europe is the home for creativity, yeah. Yeah, well, that's what we focus on. You got to decide simply what kind of a future do you want? You know, there are so many, so many things you could just do. It's really not that big of a deal. You know? What will it take for Europe to do this? Europe needs uh, leaders in every country who are actually on the side of, of the future and not these uh, controlled opposition puppets. You know, not these Zionists, not the Bolshevik, not the communists. 
but simply people who actually give a damn about Europe. We need to revive uh, the European aristocracy, really. You know, there there was a movement in Germany, the Reichsbürger movement or the uh, the Empire's People's movement, uh, like sovereign a sovereign citizen movement that denies uh, that Germany is a legal state. That is, they basically they're right about that. You know, Germany is an occupied nation, uh, and they wanted to do something about it. And s sometime in twenty twenty two, yeah, late last year, I think, the German police. Over, with an overwhelming force arrested like uh, a, a dozen of the leaders of this. They weren't even doing anything. They had just uh, a telegram a telegram group or something like that. But these the Reichsbürger movement in Germany, it, it shows you something. If the authorities, basically the Bolshevik and the, whoever, right, the, uh, if the American uh, uh, the American overlordship is so terrified, of a handful of Germans trying to get organized to rebuild the German Empire. If they're so terrified, you know that there is something right there underneath the surface of all of this, right? It is just, it's just so close, just right here, right here. There is that opportunity to very rapidly overthrow this criminal, illegal, so-called democratic system, called, now, you know, codified into the European Union, to overthrow it and to come up with something uh, that truly serves our people, you know? Is the AFD in Germany also controlled opposition? I think the AFD started out as something proper, but the leadership, Alice Weidel, is just like Maloney, just like uh, Le Pen, just like Gerd Wilders, they're all controlled opposition. You know? uh, they, they simply aren't really allowing you, uh, you know, your own leaders. Uh, and so, like I said, they show up with an overwhelming police force to arrest the leadership of the Reichsbürger movement uh, of the sovereign citizens. And, and that means the real threat is not parties participating in the democratic system because they'll never allow you to win anyway. They own the, the whole counting. The, those who count the votes uh, determine the elections, right? And the vote counters are not on your side. So, but... <clears throat> But it looks like it, it, it could be possible and feasible and fairly easily done even to break out of the democratic system and to simply start over with uh, something non-democratic. You know, you just have to get organized uh, in a way that you get away with it, that you're able to do it. Yeah, some, yeah I heard about this too, that uh, Poland voted, quote unquote, for the leftist party. And what do you think it will be the result of this? I don't think they actually voted for it. I think their elections were basically stolen or rigged by the USA. Be why do I say that? Well, you know, right when this happened, some articles appeared in Foreign Policy magazine or Foreign Affairs magazine, and they immediately started saying, like, see, see the, the Polish people, they want progress, they want leftism, they want, pro uh, you know, liberalism, and it's just those damn populists who are the problem, really. Uh, <clears throat> and and that isn't so that they're trying to basically they, they stole the Polish elections and then they're trying to you know using words trying to rewrite the narrative as though this is what Polish people always wanted they want diversity they want LGBT but they don't in Slovakia the people voted against gay marriage three times in a row and then the government pushed it down their throats anyway right because um this is how it works. It is being imposed upon us, not through democratic means. I think I, I, I mentioned this yesterday, <clears throat> that democracy is... Oh, I'm having problems with my... Oh, I'm still live. Okay. I've, ha I've had some, uh, some internet uh, dropout connections. I don't know why. It always happens. And then it, I get these pop-ups on my screen in, warning me of this and that. So I thought maybe, you know, <clears throat> I forgot what I was talking about, but that's okay, you know. Yeah, the uh, the MP in Poland who put out the menorah with the fire extinguisher. Yeah, that was an excellent, excellent action. He explained himself why he said that uh, uh, this Talmudic satanic cult actually celebrates the death of uh, non-Jewish people. Uh, and and in, in a way it's true because 
uh, you know, in Poland where, where they had that menorah lit up, there was a picture of some kind of, um, uh, you know, fundamentalist terrorist who actually said that, the, you know, the goyim, the cattle, only serve our, our vanity or something. And they really look down upon us. And I think what is going on here, the way I would describe it, is that Jewish people represent the feminine aspect right, of humanity and uh, say the European type people represent the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect is trying to poison the masculine aspect. That's how it's always been done. Uh, and, and that is why you have this conflict between say, quote unquote, the Christians and uh, the Jews in Europe. It is really the battle between uh, the masculine and the feminine in the world. Uh, but, you know, for during the colonial age, the masculine was dominant, ventured out, explore, do new things, conquer and submit, right? And now we have a, like, like ebb and flood, we're in a time where the men are a little bit exhausted. And so the feminine comes in to take back, right? To take Europe, basically. Basically, that's how I, w how I would explain it uh, to some degree, you know? Yeah, yeah, he doubled down. That was pretty good, yeah. I was talking about democracy. Yeah, okay, I, was, I think I meant to say that um, democracy is like a smokescreen. You make people believe that they are in charge, that their people are in, ch are in charge now, but it isn't so. Uh, you're just being fooled. You, democracy makes you believe that there is no one above the prime minister and the prime minister is elected by the people. It's just not how it is. The prime minister is just an employee usually who works for you know other people's interests, not for the people. Democracy is about managing and fooling the people into, you know, into submission, like sit still, be quiet while we rob you blind. You know, how do you feel about the different sects of Christianity, such as Protestantism and Catholicism? Yeah. You know, this is how it is. Everybody's always splits up. All we need is not to be divided too much that we can at least work together uh, in terms of uh, fighting for our survival, you know. What type of political system is the best? Uh, yeah, I was thinking about, you know, if you look at democracy, it draws in narcissists who want to have power. What sort of system would draw in the sort of people you want to have as leaders? I think it will have to be some sort of warrior aristocracy. Yeah, you have to find out who are the boards of directors and all these things. Eh? Yeah. <clears throat> all right. Uh, let me see if I can find some things to talk about because there you have. Uh, I'm looking at zero hedge. Yeah, why isn't there a single left-wing political party against a mass immigration in the West? Uh, yeah, so many reasons. They genuinely believe that they can use these immigrants to their benefit, basically to help uh, rob the white middle class of its savings. And then they think they can be like the managers or like the... Yeah, they really think they're going to be the managers of the migrants. And it gives them a feeling of power right many left-wing people feel that they don't have any power they want power and so they bring in the migrants and then they can be the leaders of the migrants and that's that gives them a sense of power you know don't overlook the uh you know the deeply emotional side of everything you know it's all psychology it's all emotion really and if you figure out uh if you figure people out like that then you realize okay these leftists are just power hungry they just want to be managers they want to manage the, the migration and that's it really you know, it's not very, you know, it's not very smart. Here, I see an advertisement why you should eat bison meat instead of cow meat. Okay. <laughs> Maybe in the USA, it makes sense to eat bison. In Europe, we will have just cows. Uh, let's see. I'm just looking at zero hedge to see if there's anything to do here now. 
Yeah, robotics. What about robotics? I used to watch those uh, DARPA movies about those robots. They started to look very humanly realistic. But I wonder by now they should have robots that look almost like humans. I, I think they will try this, right? They will try to uh, develop robots that look so human that you can't recognize that they're human. You know, you know the, they have the, the Secret Service, they have these super realistic face masks, right? Also in Hollywood, they have these super realistic face masks. So that's one thing they will use then, right? They will use that on the robot as well. The, the robots will have extremely realistic looking faces. You won't be able to tell the difference. But I wonder, I wonder how far it is now. I think by now, 2023, we may start to assume that DARPA USA has actual robots uh, that look extremely human and you might you might still be able to tell the difference but it's getting really close i think already but they, w they won't tell you this now they will tell you this 20 years from now right because they're going to use the robots it secretly first to uh you know uh, love you bros thanks for all your time and hard work yeah thanks for watching you know uh Oh, that, did you hear about the potential terrorist threats in Europe? Uh, uh, the Christmas markets, you know, it will not surprise me if this December we will see terrorist attacks in uh, Germany, France, the Netherlands, places like that, uh, England, uh, the big cities, of course, with tons and tons of casualties, maybe even truck, truck uh, murderers again or suicide bombers. And they're going to blame Hamas. They're going to blame Iran to try to get European people to support, uh, at, at minimum, paying taxes to win the war against terror, and probably also to get uh, European men to go to war. But you see how this all is? These wars do not really interest us Europeans. Whatever's going on uh, in Gaza and Israel right now, European men feel naturally that this is not our conflict. We, we shouldn't get involved in either side of it, right? And so you see that secret services around the world are trying to do their best to get other people to fight wars for them. I think that is one of the main tasks of secret services is to really try to manipulate, uh, first of all, your own population into submission, but then also to try to get other people on, your si on the side of your cause. Such as, for example, how would you get people from India to fight the Chinese? And how will you get African men to fight the Russians? Right? How will you get uh, Latin Americans to fight the Chinese as well? And so on and so forth. This is how they reason and they spend a lot of money on trying to realize this kind of this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah, it's, it's funny how the politicians talk about how good diversity is while they live in the widest neighborhoods. Yeah, absolutely true. Yeah. Yeah, rockets fired at the U.S. Embassy, yeah. You know, there was a, a vessel somewhere near Iran that was hit by an Iranian drone, allegedly. Uh, and it, it sounded to me like the story of Peter and the wolf. You know, Peter is the little kid who always cries wolf, and then the, vis the, the villagers come to save him, and he, he laughs at them because there was no wolf. At some point, people stop believing Peter, and then a real wolf actually kills him. And this is what, what Israel is doing. If you cry wolf about terrorist attacks so often, so many times, eventually people are naturally going to get tired of your tired of your stories. They don't want to hear it anymore. They won't believe you anymore. And they certainly are not going to go to war for you anymore. I mean, they got us with 9-11, right? When 9-11 happened for a while, I believed Muslims actually did that and we have to go to war with Islam. That's how I felt. But then... In the years after, I began to see the reality that this was an inside job. The buildings were rigged with explosives, right? It was simply a controlled demolition done by the U.S. government, by the Bush administration, you know, by the project of the PNAC, Project for the New American Century, those people. They did it. They did it and they got away with it, you know? Uh, Paul Wolfowitz, for example, was probably one of the masterminds and who else was involved? You know, tons of people, all sorts of high placed officials. It's amazing that they can just do that and get away with it. And then they get the media to lie for them. And people believe it. People just believe all that stuff. Doesn't that tell you that a large portion of the of the Western media are actually working for secret services or a lot of journalists 
are actually secret servicemen. Tucker Carlson, for example, he always tells a story that as a kid he wanted to join the CIA and they allegedly they, he didn't pass the test and they fired him. I don't think they fired him. I think they hired him, but he just he just doesn't tell you that. Yeah? <clears throat> and that's really interesting. There's a whole class of people. They are rich, they are wealthy, they've got seven homes and ten children, right, and three wives, and they still feel the need on a daily basis to work to manipulate the common people. Like, who, who are you doing that for? You, if you already have so much money, what do you care about all these people? No, for some reason, there's all a very strong sense among the rich elites. Uh, by rich, I mean anybody with more than, I don't know, $25 million or so in assets. There, among the rich elites, there's a very strong sense of it's us against the majority. It's us, the rich minority, against the poor majority. And they actually, you know, when we get a job to try to get rich, they are rich, but they get jobs to try to keep the poor people poor. <laughs> it's just amazing that this is all real, you know. Like they have, you know, the, the Freemasons and so on, and all these secret, uh, secret cults. Where that's where they meet each other, and they really see themselves as separate from the rest of humanity. And they see it as their job to keep the people in check or to get people to do what they want them to do, basically. And they, they literally... Because they own the media, they own the cultural institutions, they own the magazines, they own the social media. They, they actually do that the whole time <clears throat> to, to manipulate people into, uh, into obedience, you know. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice for some reason. It's not like I spoke too much. Was Macron's immigration bill rejected, really? I don't know what it was, don't know what it was about. Uh, uh, HP says in my city in Sweden heavily armed police are patrolling train stations and shopping malls really <coughs> uh, yeah Sweden the Sweden the number one uh, hand grenade <laughs> explosion country yeah yeah weird you know I saw it yeah I saw those leaked videos of the of the Freemason ceremonies yeah it, it's basically Judaism for for the Goyim, or they use this Kabbalism or whatever is this Talmudic Kabbalism. Oh, weird, you know. Yeah, they do a mock death ceremony, like they pretend that someone dies, they pretend to bury them, and then they bring them back to life, and then you are part, then you're part of the club, right? Uh, it's very funny. <clears throat> yeah, is Norway also slowly becoming like Sweden? That's terrible, yeah. Yeah, I suppose Oslo is a bad place, but, uh, you know, I've been to Norway sometimes, like the places like Yalo and Voss and so on. Those places are really, really nice. But other than that, you know, the big cities are always a problem, you know. <clears throat> uh, I'm looking at uh, Zero Hedge still. Yeah, we're going to definitely going to see some terrorism uh, in uh, in Europe because they need to get us on their side, you know. And uh, this is yeah. I went skiing there once, uh, and also sometimes when I pass through Norway, you go past this town. Yeah, yeah. I went skiing there once. It was nice. Yeah. All right. Yeah. What about Zelensky? How how much longer will he stay the so-called president of Ukraine? If they didn't win the war against Russia and they're running out of money, you know, what are they going to do now? You know, it's all it's all hysteria in some ways. It's just total hysteria where you see all these political leaders say things and promise things, all right, that are never going to materialize. So what are they spending the money on? You know. I think a lot of the money to Ukraine is also being funneled on to Israel, of course. <clears throat> like, if you don't want to know that you're supporting Israel, you will donate money to Ukraine, right? And that's it, yeah. Yeah, my my bet is on France being the victim of a terrorist attack. Well, France has had so many already, yeah. Do you think they'll do, do more? What they need 
but they, uh, sorry, they're also they have to do also then Germany and uh, and the UK, these big countries, to try to get the Europeans on board to fight uh, the Iranian terrorists. You know, that's a bit. Uh, I don't. I don't think Europeans can be swayed in that manner. They tried it so many times before. It doesn't really work. Europeans don't really want to go to war anymore. Especially Western Europeans are really not interested in going to war anymore. All right. All right. I got a ton of viewers. I got almost sixty viewers now. <laughs> normally, I uh, normally I have normally I have like thirty viewers or so coming online. All right. You know, has Amsterdam also been culturally enriched? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Amsterdam is a uh, what, what would you say? Less than 50% native? Definitely. Yeah. Like all these cities. Heavily enriched by Islam. Uh, European countries have gotten primarily Islamic immigration. Uh, whereas the USA is getting like Catholics for uh, Catholic Hispanics and so on. Catholic Latinos. Which is, you know, possibly even preferable to the, to what we've gotten. We're getting Islam. You know, it's not what we're, what we're looking for. <coughs> Yeah, World War One and Two were definitely enough, but you know, uh, they you know you, they can use the Third World War to bankrupt the Western middle classes to kill off the healthy men and then replace us with immigration. You know, may, maybe that's what they're gonna do. Huh? All Yeah, Mexican Catholicism is very different. <laughs> Lots of voodoo involved, really. No more brother wars, exactly. Europeans need to somehow unite, but not by following these uh, controlled opposition leaders. We really need to have our uh, our own people on board. I mean, our own people in charge. And I, I wonder how to do it, you know. I'm still working on a longer speech. I want to do a speech for like a one hour speech or so. And I'll probably practice it uh, on TikTok live at some point. But I haven't finished writing it yet because I have the the idea mapped out. I just need to you know polish it and make it really nice. It can take a little while, but maybe early next year or so I will try to do that speech to uh, to see if I can rally people around the sort of some principles that I believe in. You know. All right. All right. Yeah, Canada is getting enriched even faster than the USA. Canada is getting a lot of uh, uh, Pakistani and Indian people for some reason. You know, w what they're doing to us is just unfathomable. They are trying so hard to make white people minorities in every country, in their own countries, even in Europe, and then to erase even things like Christianity and uh, Christmas and so on. And they're really cracking down on everything that, that is beneficial and good for us including eating meat and so on, you know. That's just absurd, you know. We got to we got to figure out what to do, especially in Europe. Uh we can't allow the US leadership to dump Europeans in war and then you know we're going to lose everything unless we stand up. I mean, at this point, I have jokingly said, you know, we might as well just set fire to Europe or, or flood Europe and then set fire to whatever remains dry. If we can't live here, then no one will live here. <clears throat> Everybody has a right to talk about their ancestry as long as you're not being Wakanda and going full Afrocentrist and then pretending as though Egyptians were black people. North Africans were never black, yet in in every in in British te uh, in England in British textbooks in schools, every time somebody has some North African uh, ancestry, North Africa basically means Jewish, uh, Northwestern Africa, Morocco, and so on, and the sort of you know Semitic North Africans who then came to London or so or Paris a thousand years ago. Uh, they were not black. They were probably very pale skinned, you know, just like Hannibal was very pale skinned. It's just really bizarre that, you know, uh, 
they're, re they're rewriting historic texts so that as though North Africans were also black. But by the word black in English, you literally mean the sub-Saharan Africans, like the Bantu people of West and Central Africa, like the N people. Right? And it's just so strange that they, uh, they're, they're rewriting the whole history of, of Europe in this way. It's absolutely bizarre. Yeah, we're living in a nightmare, yeah. Defend Europe. We will win in the end, you know. Is the Cold War starting to rise again? This is not a Cold War. This is a hot war. They're going do they're going to do an actual war with Russia, probably to kill off tens of millions of white men, maybe a hundred million or more. But I don't I don't like that idea at all. You know what's bizarre? The European Union is still buying liquid natural gas off of the Russians because the pipeline was blown up and now Russia from St. Petersburg is sending out ships with gas <laughs> to the harbors of Zeebrugge in, uh, in, in Belgium. And apparently I heard also one goes to the USA. USA is still buying Russian gas. I mean, we, we are sending the Netherlands today decided to send 17 billion euros to uh, Ukraine to support the war on Russia, the ongoing effort, the, the failed counteroffensive, while at the same time we are buying li liquid natural gas off of the Russians to survive in the winter. What are you doing? You are, you are attacking a literal partner that you need for your survival. Russia is a neighbor of Europe. It's like Canada. Imagine the USA going to war with Canada over, over some kind of energy issue. You know, This is absurd. You have to at some point perhaps understand that places that are close to each other geographically will have to learn to work together. This is only natural. Whereas uh, the, the alliance between Europe and the USA, you know, divided by the uh, Atlantic Ocean, is probably n never destined to last forever. Could the Wehrmacht have won if they went straight to Moscow? Maybe not, because it's quite a stretch to get there anyway. The supply lines would have broken up, just like with Napoleon. <clears throat> you know you know why Mustache Man went to St. Petersburg instead of Moscow? Because St. Petersburg is where the Tsar family used to reside and is where the Orthodox Church had its center. And so you see what they were trying to do. They were trying to re-Christianize the, the Soviet atheist lands. You know, and if you would have, to, if Mustache Man had taken uh, Saint Petersburg, he would have been able to reinstate, uh, you know, the Orthodox Christianity, or perhaps even replace it with Catholicism, German Catholicism, or something like it, right? And then he would have been able to influence people on a religious level. I think that was the goal. They were trying to get Saint Petersburg was always the plan, and then Moscow was less important because Moscow didn't have the Tsar family, and Moscow didn't have you know, the, the Orthodox Church uh, Center and so on. At least that's my view of it. I don't think the Germans made it to Moscow in the war, maybe a couple of them. I think they were defeated at St. Petersburg in 1942 and then they had to go march home and they starved. They massively starved to death, yeah. So stand up to the US and apologize to Russia fast, no. No one's going to apologize for anything, you know. Yeah, it was very cold in the war. You know. Yeah, they couldn't get to uh, couldn't get to Moscow. That was my idea. But I have a ton of viewers, so maybe I should have something to say, huh? Yeah, is Elon Musk on our side or not? Because he does bring in Alex Jones and so on, who is, who is really a crackpot. He's a weirdo. You know, why are you doing this? Yeah, Mount Everest summit has become dangerously overcrowded. Yeah, I get that too. Tap child democracy. Yeah. No, that's not the reason. They didn't just go to Stalingrad just to humiliate Hitler, to humiliate Stalin. 
They went there, like I said, because the Tsar family was there. It was the center of religious power in, in Russia. They were trying to uh, control the religion. <clears throat> yeah, you think Musk and Jones are controlled opposition? Yeah. Probably, yeah. Leningrad, yeah. Hey, somebody from Canada. Nice to see you too. Nice to tune in. Uh, I don't know why you think my ideas are half cooked. You know, uh, I'm just one of the very few people actually doing the thinking about what the hell is going on in the Western world and what the hell we are supposed to do. You know, as a European, from a European perspective, most of the white people in the world live in Europe, right? We have like 700 million people over here, and de depending on your definition, you know. Like I've said this before, we had like Europe has uh, probably around three times as many white people as the USA does. Why shouldn't the Western power be here? Why should it be in the USA? If the USA is pushing this extremely bizarre dystopian future for di of diversity and LGBT and so on and gender neutrality and and you know this this rabid feminism coming out of the US, it's just so extreme. We need some sanity back. And I, I feel like Europe is the older brother here and Europe needs to take charge very rapidly. We take charge of NATO and we start telling the USA what to do. Not the other way around anymore. <clears throat> Not many white people left in Canada. Yeah, I suppose places like Toronto and the big cities are, they're wiping you out. But then what's next? Are they going to send the migrants on to, uh, you know, they're going to send the migrants to the countryside and so on. That's really extreme, yeah. Yeah, the feminism is everywhere, but, you know, it actually came from the USA. You know, they designed all, a lot of these programs at, um, at Yale University and uh, Berkeley uh, because that's where the, uh, a lot of the European Marxist Jews who fled Europe after World War II, they got to Berkeley and Yale, and there they began <clears throat> basically infecting uh, the U.S. society from within with, you know, radical Marxism, radical feminism, you know, the LGBT, transgenderism, they started pushing all these things out. Uh, <clears throat> I get a ton, of, all of a sudden I have a ton of viewers, but I can't see all your, uh, all your comments anymore here. Yeah, yeah. I know about the Kalergi plan. I read the book, like Practical Idealism by von, Kau von, Ka von Kaudenhove Kalergi. And, you know, he explains everything. He explains the plan. The idea was always to try to fuse Europe with Africa and with Asia and to mix the races together into some kind of ho homogenous brown muck. Uh, why they want to do it? Probably to isolate China. That's probably primarily the, the idea here. You know? <clears throat> no, I didn't watch the last battle. That's a bit of a... Australia took in half a million migrants this year. Yeah, that's, that's crazy, you yeah. know? Yeah, why do Americans work so hard compared to Europeans? We don't work that hard. Yeah. I think you still have the illusion that by working hard, you're going to make more money. But in Europe, lots of people, they clock out, man. <laughs> they realize, okay, you can work so hard, but then they just tax us harder. I think we get taxed more, so there's less incentive to work too hard, really. Yeah, yeah the Frankfurt School, exactly. The... the the Frankfurt School intellectuals, they moved to the USA, to Berkeley and so on. And they really began infecting uh, like Theodore Adorno and so on and Marcuse, those guys. There used to be this, uh, this guy making videos on YouTube, Vertigo Politics. Do you remember Vertigo Politics? He made such excellent videos. I was a real fan of that. I thought he was really good at what he was doing. Uh, too bad Vertigo Politics apparently... Some say that he was getting doxxed or something, and so he closed closed up shop. But yeah, yeah, that's the real. Uh, I think the, the answers to <laughs> the answers to our problems you'll find them in Vertigo Politics's uh, Vertigo Politics's videos. He basically uh, did all the research. Anyway, we just need to <laughs> rewatch those videos and uh, you know figure out what to do next. Yeah. Yeah, the USA, from our perspective, it is an other entity. It is an other entity. It's not the same anymore. The US leadership is obviously not American, you know. Yeah, I've read a lot about Friedrich Nietzsche, but, you know. Yeah. 
Yeah, number one, all right. The United States, the United States used to be a conservative Christian country, yeah. Yeah, they changed it. But what are you, what are they changing? In Europe, it's Islam, but what exactly is changing the U.S. now? It's more, more atheism now. Yeah. And the dollar's crashing, yeah. No, no, you didn't. <laughs> Someone says that the USA saved the world in 1945, but you didn't do that. Uh, Russia, the Red Army, beat the Germans. And then only after the Germans were defeated did the Americans march in and they colonized Western Europe. They took Germany and uh, the Netherlands and so on, France, whatever. They, they colonized Western, uh, Western Europe. Uh, that is what basically the European Union is today. The European Union was co-founded by the American State Department, co-funded by the CIA, for example. It is basically a colonial project that is keeping us under the, the thumb of the USA. And this is not healthy for us. And this situation cannot last forever. We are now an extension of US empire, but it just can't last. It just can't last because Europeans are tired of funding American wealth all the time. We're going to cut loose at some point. Though I welcome Americans returning to Europe, you know, if you want to talk about your ancestry, you know, if you know where you're from. Someone wants to know what I eat in a typical day. I eat a lot of carnivore and a little bit of vegetables. Yeah, I eat uh, probably 700 grams of meat a day or so. Yeah, like 300 grams of chicken breast and 400 grams of ground beef, something like that. And then uh, yogurt, cheese, butter. And a little bit of a little bit of vegetables, maybe some broccoli or cauliflower or something, you know, and some and eggs, of course, you know. I just don't feel uh, I don't feel well eating uh, uh, to, uh, too much vegetables and too much fruit and too much sugar in general. Uh, yeah, fruit. Tomato is our fruit. I eat tomato, and I sometimes eat uh, or an orange or so. Yeah. Uh, nothing crazy, though. I don't eat fruit bowls or fruit salads. I would never eat that. That's no good. But <clears throat> and I eat sparingly some bread, but so uh, often I often I don't eat bread in a day, but sometimes I do. You know. Yeah, I eat meat every day. Me too. I hate the interracial ads on TV. Yeah. Who doesn't? They're very obnoxious. They're just they're trying to program you to want this, but then again, because they shove it up your nose, you don't want this, you know. Yeah, convenient, huh? That uh, the Gaza refugees are going to be re relocated to Europe. But why would we want them? The Gaza refugees, they hate us, you know. You eat what is in the, <laughs> oh, what's on sale, all right. Well, what can I say about Gaddafi? I liked Gaddafi when he was still alive. You know, I learned about his plan to start the, uh, what was it, the, cold, the golden dinar, because Libya has a lot of gold. I think Libya has as much gold as uh, England or maybe even more. And they wanted to start selling Europe oil either in euro or in gold. And of course, the United States marches in and they take him out. They kill him. I don't think that was a bad uh, plan of Gaddafi, you know, to start uh, trading with Europe in euros or in, or in the golden dinars. It would have been a great, a great thing for Europe, but the U.S. wouldn't allow it, right? So they came in and they killed Gaddafi. <clears throat> Can you imagine that? We could, we could have had, in Europe, we could have had peaceful relations to countries like Libya. We would have had it better if we would have had financial gains and Gaddafi would not have sent the, the the migrants across the Mediterranean to Europe he would have he would have acted as a protector of Europe and this is what we need you know in my vision Europe should have alliances with North African nations to help us keep the migrants further migration out right and then we you know, we work with the with the oil rich countries in their currency. It can be we can do the euro or we can do the gold golden dinar or whatever they want. 
but then we cut the U.S. out of this story. And I think that would make things so much saner and healthier for, for Europe. You know, we could finally do something about mass immigration. You know, we can also stop the American wars in the Middle East all the time. No more wars. The wars would come to an end, right? And then Europe can also have proper alliances with Russia so we can get access to cheap gas and cheap oil and materials and so on. And I don't mean that we just want to make Europe rich because getting rich is like an American thing, right? You work to get rich. I think in Europe, we're going to focus very hard on the more of the more on the spiritual side of life, where we focus on culture and creativity and we focus more on you know, being original in some way uh, and having some interesting goals to work on. I myself personally also believe, for example, that pollution is bad. I would like the River Rhine to be cleaned up to the point where the Atlantic salmon voluntarily, voluntarily wants to swim back up the river. You know, it, it needs to be that fresh. I would clean up Europe. I would use a lot of money. I would spend a lot of money on cleaning Europe up gladly, right? We should bring back more forests, you know, clean up the lakes, make sure that there's fish everywhere right here, right? I, I think it would be a very, very bad idea. Uh, you know, if we would only focus on making money as they do in the USA, uh, with a total disregard of the environment, you know, I'm not an environmentalist, but I like fresh air and I like forests and I like to see deer in my forests. Where I was living in the Netherlands, you know, we had a very small forest, but when you w had a walk there sometimes, you could see wild deer running around. And that's what you want for every forest in Europe. There needs to be these animals. They need to be able to live there. If they are fine, then we are fine. Right? That's, that's the message here. Tom Kaczynski? No, that's the other one. Ted Kaczynski. I think you mean Ted Kaczynski. Yeah, the industrial society and its future. Yeah, yeah we want wolves and foxes. I've never seen a wolf, but I've seen foxes in the Netherlands, yeah, and I've seen uh, wild horses, wild cattle, and uh, deer, and so on, so on. Yeah. yeah, I eat tons of eggs, definitely two or three a day, maybe sometimes more. <laughs> yeah, the Netherlands is cutting down its tree. You know what's strange? Get this. When they tell you you are using uh, durable energy for your electric car, right? It's often in Europe, it's forests. They cut down forests to burn them as biomass, right? To generate electricity for your Tesla, and they call it green energy. Yeah, green, because the leaves used to be green. Uh, but it's not actually green energy if you're burning wood to generate electricity. You know how primitive that is? That's what they do in North Korea. That's where they burn wood to generate electricity, right? But we're doing it in Europe. We're burning down massive forests in Estonia, in Sweden, in the Netherlands, Germany. Everybody's cutting down their trees. I wonder why they're doing that, though. Are they trying to make room for solar panels or something or for wind uh, turbine parks? Whatever it is, there's a, there's a, or maybe they're just psychopaths who just don't care. Maybe they just only care about making money and then they call it green. I think that's also very possible, you know. I think we do need nuclear power plants. If nuclear fusion is real, we should definitely have those, you know? Yeah. The EU is dependent on the US for protection, yeah. But what kind of protection is it if the United States bombs the Nord Stream pipeline? That's not the protection we need, you know? And then they don't allow us to have a, a strategic autonomy. But a lot of people are talking about it now, you know? The French and uh, who else? Macron even mentioned it, and uh, the ECFR, the European Council on Foreign Relations, they are talking about strategic autonomy for the EU, but you know, I wonder what that's going to look like, you know? I've never read Baudrillard, sadly. Sounds like an interesting author, yeah. Oh yeah, thorium reactors. If these things are real, then that's what we want, yeah? The cultural enrichers are a huge liability for the West, yeah, definitely. You know, you need to have a vision. What is the purpose of Europe? Are we, are we just here to get by and to live in our boxes? And our, I, I call them row houses or you could call them terraced homes. That's not a life, man. We have to have something bigger, something more interesting to do. And, you know, you, you can imagine like Hercules had his 12 great works. What could we do as Europeans? 
we could actually go to the moon for real or go to Mars for real and, and do space things. But what else can you do on Earth? And I think on Earth, what we would have to do is focus on the cultural aspect where we bring back uh, a sense of a sense that boys are allowed to become men, that boys can become masculine. We teach them to be warriors, how to fight, but also how to build log cabins outside. We should definitely separate boys and girls in the schooling system so that girls can stay inside and learn all about, you know, you know, not cooking and cleaning, but learn all about textbook wisdom and talk about it and have their debates. But boys, they need to go outside and start building bridges together. You should give you should give uh, ten year old boys an assignment to actually build a, a bridge across a pond or across a moat somewhere, right? And, and get them to succeed in that, and then teach and then of course teach them how to use the tools, teach them how to do everything, or how to make a bicycle or things like that. Things that are actually really useful, because I don't think it's normal for young boys at all to sit still in in, in classrooms. Girls tolerate this better, but boys. <laughs> It's destroying you. It's just not normal, you know? Yeah. Yeah, teach teach kids farming. Yeah, how to raise cattle. Because, you know, we're, we're so disconnected from nature. Indeed, yeah. You know, kids growing up on an actual farm where they can learn about farming, you know, about how to milk a cow and how to churn milk and how to make butter and so on. You know, this will be extremely... You know useful for kids to learn right yeah boys hate school it makes <laughs> of course yeah the practical skills yeah that's what i mean practical skills and competencies that's what we need to we need to focus on you know <laughs> uh someone mentions in dutch uh, katja mentions in dutch like boys don't want to be with girls in the same classroom because her son had to uh knit a, a piece of clothing <laughs> yeah that's probably not what boys want to do they want to build bridges or make swords or something or or a crossbow or, or learn to hunt right or learn how to make leather if you have animal skin how do you make leather that's probably yeah you know cutting down trees yeah it's it's all how to make a fire and so on you know, how to how to do that yeah, how to, yeah. <laughs> Oh, you helped your uh, you helped your son make it. Okay. Yeah, in Finland they have these learning ideas uh, wherever the kid is interested in. Really, yeah, we didn't have that in the Netherlands. Not not in my experience. It was more like you know. It was like textbook program, man. Textbook program. That was all I remember is that I didn't like it. It was just very boring. Yeah. Yeah, boys need to learn about how to do physical work. Yeah. Uh, it can be anything, anything relevant, anything they like to do. Of course, you need to look into what they like to do. Right? Right. Really, is even Iceland is now being culturally enriched. Okay. I feel so nihilistic about the situation. You mean you can't do anything about it? Yeah, that's sad. And why are they doing this, man? It makes no sense. You have people who are completely alien to the societies that other people built. And they want to just take over, right? That's all that because they're jealous or they're full of envy, you know. Do you think f advocating for the for the freedom to homeschool in Europe would help? Yes, definitely. Homeschooling would work. Yeah, I don't. It's not very common in Europe to do homeschooling. You have to have like some exception, like if your kid is an athletic or something, or if your kid is in the Olympic Games, maybe you can get an exception. But you know, you know, yeah, <laughs> people certainly didn't like. Uh, school primary school middle school high school yeah europe is feminized that's absolutely true but we're being poisoned you know it's not like the european men are feminine they're not some are like the leftist men are but you know we're under attack by the media you're constantly confronted with this you know bizarre leftish you know worldview imposed on us that just does not uh does not sit well we don't want this nobody wants this but we have to pretend to be be okay with it, you know, or else, you know, <clears throat> it's disgusting, you know. Yeah, someone grew up on a farm in Illinois, and they got to learn all the sort of things, unlike other people there. It's, yeah, that's how it is, right? You have you've experienced something that no one else has experienced, of course, and that's really great, you know. 
Yeah, homeschooling is almost forbidden in the Netherlands and in Germany. That's too bad, yeah. <laughs> Go get your coffee, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think, you know, what is the thing with Europe? Europe is overcrowded. The Netherlands now, if you look at countries in the world, the Netherlands is actually the most uh, densely populated country in the world now with more than 420 people per square kilometers compared to the USA, which has about 35 per square kilometer on average. Now, of course, I understand that New York City is way more densely populated than the Netherlands. But if you look at countries, then the Netherlands is uh, densely populated. And I think Europe in general, Northwestern Europe and uh, Southeast Asia are like the population hotspots in our planet. The USA is not so very crowded at all, but that's probably because you also have a large desert area where you can't live there anyway, right? Uh, at least U Europe doesn't have deserts. We have we can live anywhere in Europe, really. Uh, and that's, yeah, it's been a blessing, but also a problem that, you know, we build these cities, we stack the cities full of people, and now what? What are you going to do next? What are you going to do when you've maxed out your urban, uh, your urban society? with people and now you want to bring in more and more and more immigrants you know the hometown i grew up i grew up in used to have like fifty thousand people when i when i left and now they have like eighty thousand people eighty five thousand people and and i wondered like where do they store this extra people okay they build a few more suburban neighborhoods around it but mostly they started building um you know apartment blocks in the city center so, so the city centers become more and more crowded. That's where they leave all the people. They just build more, more high risers, like uh, you know, twelve floors, twenty floors, and so on, right? And that's where they stack all the. They just stack these people on top of each other, because, well, they're they're new consumers, right? The they want they just want to stack more consumers near where the shopping malls already are anyway, you know, and that makes everything so uh, so so drab so overcrowded and 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 boring really you know yeah of course white americans are not europeans uh, enemies but the leadership is and this is a bit of a problem like how are we going to deal with this you know uh i welcome an american uh, uprising against your leadership and then we then we can talk about doing things differently of course yeah but the same is true for europe europeans are living under the spell of brussels and the eu it's just as problematic. We also need our uprisings here. I can't. I cannot believe that we will just keep doing what we've been doing all this time. At some point, people are going to have to get fed up. And I wondered, like, what, what what might be necessary for Europeans to actually stand up and fight? Well, if they go hungry, probably. If it gets too cold to heat your home in the winter time, you're going to see people rioting. But I remember in the 1920s. It was basically the German women, when they started going hungry, they started, you know, the whole movement that led to the 1930s. It was hungry, hungry German women who, who, who went to, uh, uh, they went marching through the rich neighborhoods of Berlin. That's how it all started. The women started it. And I think that is just, just how it's going to be. In our timeline, too, you're going to have to wait for hungry women when the women realize that feminism was a lie, that feminism conned them out of having families, and now they're going to go hungry and they can't afford rent anymore. Maybe then the young women will finally revolt and realize you've been fooled. And I think the women will eventually come to terms with feminism and, and see feminism as this very dark destructive problem that ruined their lives i think how many women go to university now and they come out of university and they get their job and then they work and then before you know it they're 40 years old they don't have children and then you know you know at some point you're going to have to admit that you've been fooled right right you've been you've been conned and then you have to like open the borders to immigrants coming from abroad who bring their five kids with them oh that's okay that's okay but you need an abortion for your one, okay? You know, it doesn't make any sense anymore. <laughs> Cat ladies, yeah. All right. Uh, I have some kind of uh, internet connectivity. No, I'm still fine. 
Yeah, the USA was actually 90% white around 1950. Uh, you know, when you speak of Hispanics, those, those were from Spain in those days. And they are white people. They are like the Ostrogoths are basically Germanic people and the Visigoths are Germanic people. So Visigothic Spain, it's just white people, right? And, and so the United States was over, no, over 96% white at some point until 1950. Uh, and that's because all the Latino people you have now today, they came in after 1950, after 1960, 1965. That's when they came in. The black people, believe it or not, they may be 13% of the population today, but they were never that big. They are quite a large population now, but they used to be far less. You think the United States was like full of black slaves and like three white people whipping, whipping the whip, right? No, it, they were like two or three percent of the population. They were very small groups. Yeah, and they grew to 13% today. So yeah, the USA used to be a majority white Christian nation. That's how it was founded. So really, the real diversity that the US originally had was Anglo, German, and French. You know? And I think the French uh, moved to Quebec eventually, right? Yeah. Yeah, USA now has 340 million people, yeah. You know, I think African Americans have the highest abortion rates <clears throat> also on top of their birth rates. And that's, you know, it makes sense, of course, since such a large part of the USA is basically uh, longitudinal, longitudinally on par with Northern Africa anyway. Uh, <clears throat> whereas Europe is more like Canada, but warmer. It's like a warmer version of Canada. <clears throat> Yeah, that's what I mean. Quebec was always French. Uh, that's the, because the French moved there. Yeah, Geert Wilders, I don't believe he's going to do anything about anything. No. Uh, I think Europeans need to stick together, even those who are across the pond. Yeah. <clears throat> well, yeah, sure. We have our people abroad in the colonies, you know, uh, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand. We all have the same problems. Mass immigration, the loss of our culture, the attack on our men, you know, the deconstruction of masculinity and and eat you know eat bugs and live in a pod they're doing it everywhere to us uh, the question is just how and when are we going to start fighting back and who is going to take the lead we need multi we need many leaders we need people to stand up and start start doing speeches i'm going to start doing speeches as well i'm writing a speech right now it will take a little while you know really Someone says that African Americans now have low birth rates. Maybe they do, huh? Love from Romania. Oh, nice to see you. I've been to uh, Cluj Napoca once. Yeah. Uh, Romania is a surprisingly beautiful country. You can take a train from the east of the country to the west, and it's like eight hours in the train, and you go through these mountains. It's really beautiful. They have a lot of nature there, yeah. Yeah, young people everywhere can't afford property because we're being we're being priced out of our future. We're being priced out of the market, you know. Yeah. What if an immigrant would like to integrate in Europe? Yeah. You know, this is pointless. We have already too many people in Europe anyway. Our problem is not that we don't have enough people. Our problem is that we have too many old people. So we fix that problem with the old people, you know. And then we, f we phase them out, you know, we'll, we will have to phase them out because we can't afford them. You know, even with immigration, the European birth rates were not increased. Uh, even with immigration, we are not able to deal with the old people because guess what? The immigrants are also aging. They also have their, uh, their old people now. So they have a lot of the elderly generations, you know. <clears throat> matters it matters in your survival you can foresee your mistreatment if you lose your numbers but that's when you can segregate you can cut loose and separate if for example the united states the southern states become majority non-white then move leave go further north and regroup no one is stopping you from regrouping you can regroup across borders the borders don't matter they aren't real your people are real same in europe say if western germany becomes totally islamized then the Christian white people will just have to move further east or further north or whichever. Uh, we don't have, to, my point is you don't have to stick, stay stuck in a situation you don't need to be in. We can also be migrants. If the migrants can come to us, we can also move a little bit and then regroup 
and then take back what was ours and re reconquer our, our, you know, yeah, reconquer, reconquista, the reconquest of, uh, of it all, you know. Maine is the whitest state in the USA, also the safest one. Yeah, usually you have these these kinds of states like Maine. Uh, they have a, a ton of nature, very beautiful there, right? And uh, you can get away from all the, you know, you have the Appalachian Mountains and the Rocky Mountains, and those are places in case everything goes wrong, you can still run for the hills. Look, in the long term, of course, we're going to survive in the long term. We, we can hide in the woods of northwest Eurasia, or you can climb up the hills of the Appalachians and survive there. <clears throat> There's tons and tons of ways to survive. Uh, in the short term, it's just what's going to happen. The cities are overcrowding with immigrants. We're, you're losing your numbers there. It's going to be more like South Africa, where the big cities that the white people build are now full of non-whites and, you know, there seems to be very little you can do about that unless you want to starve them off, you know. California has been almost entirely taken over by Hispanics. Yeah, I believe that, you know. California. Yeah, places like that, you may simply lose them, yeah. You know, you know, the European stock people, they built the industries in the USA like the modern industries. And so they attract tons and tons of migrants and other people. And they think they can take over with affirmative action, right? They're very gifted with words and they weasel themselves into a positions of power. But then the, the, the founding stock they leave, right? You think that people who were never able to kickstart an industrial revolution in their own territories are somehow able to continue the ones Europeans started? No, of course not. It's, it, it's going to end very badly. Yeah, I would go to northern Scandinavia myself. If I ever had to go somewhere, I would go to northern Sweden or something, or Norway, and just get the hell away from everything. <clears throat> and Scotland, yeah. Not a bad idea. You know, in my home state, 70% is white, but most of them live in the two big cities. Okay. Right, right, right. My forefathers fought for this land, and I will not surrender it to see it turn into Africa completely. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, homes in Norway are extremely expensive, right? But I suppose in rural Sweden, you have still very cheap homes. Yeah. Will Russia ever be enriched? Yeah, who knows, yeah. Again, like with the Russians, the Europeans, the white Europeans should ally with the Christian white Russians. And then together, you know, we would make a stand against Islam. That's my idea. You know, even uh, once upon a time, I was invited to some right wing dinner in the Netherlands. And I suggested this. I said, you know, why are we still working with the USA? If we would ally with the white Russians, we could fight the Muslims, keep Islam out of Europe. No, 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 we shouldn't do that, blah, blah. I thought that was so weird. You know, you're not looking at the practical reality, then, you know. Yeah, the cities are already turning to trash because who's going to maintain the cities? You know, the people who never maintain cities are going to maintain cities. No, and if the people who could maintain the cities don't want to anymore because they don't live there anymore, who's going to invest in place? Look at Detroit in the USA. You know, how many how many white middle class people would love to move there and invest in it, you know? <clears throat> it's not going to happen, see? It doesn't work that way. Doesn't, yeah, doesn't Russia? Yeah, Russia has a large Muslim population, but uh, Europe has more Muslims than Russia in that sense. I think uh, France, per percentage-wise, France has more Muslims than Russia does. Uh, the point is that there are, in the northwestern region of Russia, you have a very large white population. You know, these are not bad people. I don't like Putin, right? But the Russians and, and the Europeans, we are of the same stock, large, stock largely. You know, you have your Slavic people with Germanic influences and so on. Uh, it, it doesn't make sense to to see Russia as the eternal enemy. 
you know, Napoleon tried to take Russia, Hitler tried to take Russia, they all failed. Maybe the solution is not to wage this kind of war, but to actually just learn to work together. And I, I don't see why Russia would be a real threat to Europe. Europe has 740 million people, and the Russians have like 130 million. How come, how come we can't just overwhelmingly assert ourselves in Europe? If Europe would just militarize itself to the teeth, and be very strong in this sense, right? Then Russia is no threat to us, but then we can work with them. See, that's my point. Detroit, USA used to be very beautiful and then the white people left, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, rural Sweden is cheaper, yeah, that's right. Germany is the center of Europe, but too weak for now, yeah, well, They've been listening to the wrong leadership. The leaders of Euro uh, the leaders of Germany don't live in Germany. They don't even live in Europe. You know, yeah. Detroit was once called the Paris of the West. Unbelievable. Well, it no longer is. You know. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the small number of educated immigrants who actually benefit our society? Yeah. We could have our own children. See, so it doesn't make sense. You could have. We could have had more children. So. Uh, it doesn't make sense to replace our future and give it away to other people coming in. Yeah? You know, nobody cares about small numbers of people coming to anywhere, right? But that's not what this is. These aren't small numbers. We're sending millions of uneducated African men to Europe every year, like a half a million or a million a, million a year. Why, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? This is wrong. We, we are throwing Europe away. We are throwing, Euro we are throwing pearls to swines, as they say. Yeah, Paris isn't Paris anymore. That's true, yeah. Uh, I think Norway, yeah, the countryside should be better than Sweden. I think Sweden is really a far-left country. It's very strange. Why don't they do anything about anything there, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Who lives in Paris, yeah? Greetings from Norway. Was, yeah, somebody writes that in Dutch, okay. Very good said, yeah, okay. Oh, and thanks for watching Dutch, okay. Very good said, yeah, okay. <laughs> oh, and thanks for watching, yeah. And so, uh, yeah, they're destroying the European demographic with mass immigration, you know. Thoughts on Ukrainian refugees? Well, it makes sense that they left. At least they actually sent the women and the children and not the men. The men weren't allowed to leave the country. Compare that to the African men who leave their women and children behind, claiming they are coming from war zones, you know. Well, what kind of a joke is this? Or do you remember what happened when the first parties of, uh, the first batches of Ukrainian refugees came to Germany? They were Africans. <laughs> there were Africans studying in Ukraine, and the Africans fled to Germany first. So the first Ukrainian arrivals in certain places in Germany, they came from Ukraine, but they weren't Ukrainians. <laughs> they were Africans. Like, what the fuck? The people were confused about that. Like, we were supposed to help people from Ukraine, right? And then, and then they send us Africans. Because also a lot of Africans will use these wars as excuses to come into Europe, you know? It, it's really sad that they do that, you know? And migrants don't love the cold. Yeah, this is no joke, man. Have you ever, have you ever been to places like the Netherlands or, uh, or, or, Nor or Sweden even in the cold, in the cold months? You know... Uh, in in Stockholm, you can wait for the tram, right? For for the tram to arrive, you can usually wait outside, but there's also like an indoor area. All the black and the brown people are waiting in the indoor area, and the white people are waiting outside on the on the train, uh, waiting outside for the train, right? Or even, I went to Iceland once, and I was waiting for a bus outside, and there was this black American guy, and he was like hiding in the hotel lobby waiting for the bus to arrive because it was just too damn cold for him outside. No, black people, they don't like the cold. And that's why I would, I would be fine with it if Europe, uh, Europe's temperatures dropped by five degrees on average, you know. Good idea, yeah. Yeah. There's a surprising number, number of Ukrainians in America who have very Americanized politically. Okay, interesting, yeah. Now, you don't see migrants on the streets in the wintertime, no. 
you know, my opinion about strict immigration, you know, immigration should be allowed. If you want to marry somebody from another country, you should be either they go to your country or you go to their country. That's so that's reasonable. But to send millions of people and then to allow them to bring their kids and their and their sisters and their their nieces over. That's just you can't do that. That's a, that's that's an act of war. You're invading. That's an invasion. You know, it doesn't make any sense. I mean, a lot of migration is supposedly uh, to serve the economy, but it doesn't actually do that. The, a lot of it is just manifestation where they imagine that immigration is going to be good for us, right? <clears throat> but it's not. So they bring in a million people or so thinking these are going to be a Harvard professors someday. And it turns out none of them end up, end up doing any work and they all apply for welfare. That is not what you want, you know? Thoughts on Geert Wilders? Yeah, Geert Wilders of the Netherlands, I've said it before, he's just controlled opposition. He's going to spend Dutch tax money on, uh, on Israel. I doubt he will be able to do anything at all for the Dutch people, sadly. You know. Yeah, immigration immigration's a net negative as a whole. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is true. There's a report called Borderless Welfare State by Amsterdam, University of Amsterdam. They did the math and they calculated that the Netherlands has now spent 400 billion euros on immigration, meaning a net loss. Not, they didn't just spend it, it's a net loss on immigration. Because you have to take care of the immigrants, you have to house them and feed them. Most of them don't have diploma, so you first have to educate them. They don't speak the language, so you first have to teach them the language, and so on and so forth. All these costs included, medical costs, because in, in Europe, in the Netherlands, immigrants get free medical health care, right? And so, and so they get welfare payments, and so on and so forth. Public transportation passes, and so on. And it turns out it's, a, it's been in, in a net 400 billion euro loss on immigration. This was supposed to be, this was supposed to be a, a, you know, a benefit to us. We were, we were supposed to get immigrants to do our work that we didn't want to do, right? That's what they always say. But they don't actually work. They just apply for welfare and they get a free house. You know, that doesn't make any sense. You know? <clears throat> uh, the report was called uh, Borderless, the Borderless Welfare State. Uh, there, you can get the PDF online, Borderless Welfare State. I'm typing it out now. By the University of Amsterdam. Uh, who would you consider the true opposition? There was the German Reichsbürger movement, the sovereign citizen movement in Germany. They, uh, they were arrested by an overwhelming police force simply for discussing a potential revolt against... Uh, the German state. Yeah, they were real. That's the real opposition. The real opposition, they get arrested and shot. <clears throat> uh, yeah. S thoughts? <laughs> Do I have thoughts on the Hamite Bantu divide in Africa? I don't know much about it, but I suppose the Bantu people are the West Africans, right? Don't know who the Hamites are. Then. Maybe there are uh, another people. <clears throat> Can white people immigrate to Europe and get welfare? Yeah, we have tons of people. Ukrainians get welfare in the Netherlands if they don't get jobs. But this is the difference again. The Ukrainian migrants in the Netherlands, they do get jobs, whereas uh, way more than Africans, most African immigrants are on welfare, you know? So that's, that's strange. Much love from Texas. Yeah, you're nailing every point, yeah. Your voice needs to be amplified. Well, that's why I'm here. I do these live streams to uh, get through to people. Uh, usually I have something interesting to say or something useful. Yeah. Uh, uh, someone from the UK, it seems that the FVD, the Dutch party, they have a leader who might not be controlled opposition. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Cherry Baudet. Yeah, he does seem to be very different from the Western elite circles. Yeah. He, uh, I don't think he's that he's controlled in this sense now. Yeah. We should start thinking of NATO as a nation instead of an alliance. Okay. But who's going to lead it? You know, who's going to lead this NATO? Who in the UK would you consider true opposition? Oh, I don't know about that. Don't know about that. You know. All right. <laughs> Okay, uh, what political party do I support? Presently, none. Uh, 
I would support, uh, you know, I could get shot for saying things like, you know, I, I support an actual popular revolt. I just don't know at the time how to do this. And I have no plans on participating. You know, I have to, you know, avoid getting arrested for what I say. But, you know, I don't see it happening through the democratic system. I don't see how, how can the common people uh, rise up and defend their interests, you know, uh, <clears throat> against this corrupt World Economic Forum, Kissinger, Klaus Schwab stuff. How the hell are we going to fight that? You're not going to fight that by voting in elections that they control and when they own the voting machines and so on. Why is Soros pushing the voting machines everywhere? You know, not not to give us the vote, of course, but to con us, you know. There is no political solution, I think, yeah. I think you're right about that, you know. <laughs> Never forget what happened in 1453. What happened then? Was that the split of the of the church or something? What was going on? Yeah, voting is a hoax, definitely, you know. Opinion about Russian immigrants, yeah. <clears throat> They're like Eastern European immigrants in general, right? Now you have to understand that if you grow up <clears throat> if you grow up in Western Europe, in Germany or the Netherlands, for example, they give you all the American media. Hollywood is always there. We watch all your Hollywood movies in the cinemas and we get American TV, com uh, TV commercials even, but nothing from Russia. They don't show Russian movies in our cinemas. We don't watch Russian TV shows or, and so on. It's a complete blackout in this sense. You know... You can read the German, uh, no, the Russian novelist, like, uh, you know, who are they called? Leo Tolstoy and so on. You can read Tolstoy. That is kind of promoted because I suppose Tolstoy also supports somewhat the European point of view. But, you know, <clears throat> no, liberals don't actually want to make the earth great again. No, they just want to manage the masses that's what that's what i think they really want they want to have power over the people control them with rules and laws make people make people behave the way they want them to behave as though you are as though you are managing an anthill like you know those people they own an anthill in their in their bedrooms right and that's what they are like they just want to control the ants or something you know <clears throat> how can you red pill your npc girlfriend you know uh, usually, if you're a man and you're right wing, the girl will have to become right wing because, uh, you know, just keep ta keep talking to her. And, you know. uh, I think someone made a video about this. Uh, uh, it's on uh, on TikTok. Yeah. What did you say about people getting shot? You know, there was a sovereign citizen movement in Germany and the leadership, they were arrested uh by an, by an overwhelming police force at some point i think this happened last year december because they were talking about actually overthrowing the german government and what i meant to say is that <clears throat> the the real opposition they get either arrested or shot <clears throat> the the controlled opposition they get airtime on tv when when jordan peterson comes on a mainstream uh, tv show to do an interview you can kind of assume that he is also a controlled opposition because the real opposition is not allowed to be on TV. You know? Am I a sovereign citizen? I do support that that belief system, yeah? This, it's the idea that we need to bring back the German Empire, so to speak, or the Holy Roman Empire, and basically accept that the, the present democracies are occupied governments, <clears throat> occupied by you know foreigners and our enemies this isn't this is not for us we are we are being held captive of nations that do not serve our interests at all and the media just serves to fool us on a daily basis to make us believe that we're we're fine now you'd be surprised how many people in the netherlands believe that their country is so great that that's why migrants want to come to the netherlands and they think that as long as migrants are coming our country must be great. And it's not how it is. It's more that, you know, if you only knew that, <laughs> that there are places on earth where life is so much better, if you only knew, right? They don't know because no one tells them. The media don't show them that it can be better elsewhere, you know? Yeah. 
yeah, we're, we're being held held captive by the wealthy, unelected uh, WEF or World Economic Forum elites. Yeah, very true. <clears throat> yeah, we weren't meant to work our lives away. We were meant <laughs> we were meant to colonize. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we were meant. You know what what can still be done if you're really tired of the urban life? Where can you still go? Well, you can go colonize the subarctic regions of uh, Canada, Greenland, northern Scandinavia, uh, northern Eurasia. There's tons of things that you can do there. <clears throat> even, even Siberia, for example, or even uh, Antarctica at some point, you know. What are my predictions for the 2024 U.S. election? Uh, I don't I don't think they will allow Trump to win. So it's going to be either Vivek or uh, Nimarata or uh, or someone uh, on the Democrat side. Uh, maybe uh, Michelle Obama will do a surprise runner. But anyway, they're going to have somebody they control. You know, it, it's not going to be they're not going to do anything good for the white middle class. They're going to, well, whoever wins, whether it's Democrat or Republican, they're going to strip the white middle class dry, uh, take your guns away, basically. And then in case of a civil war, they will make white men look like they're the evil ones, even though they're not, you know. Uh, I was in Norway this year in the middle of nowhere, and there's just like pride shit everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's weird. Huh? Why are they doing that? This is child abuse. It's it's systematic psychological abuse, deliberately harming young children and teenagers to try to make them believe that, you know, don't you get the idea that you're allowed to be healthy and have a family of your own? No, 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 no. Take the gay flag and flush it down your ass, right? How do you feel about people from English and Dutch colonies wanting to come back to Europe? Yeah. Welcome back. You know, rather you than uh, Bantu people or Hamite people. Yeah, no, it's it's better to, if if Europe really needs more immigrants, then it's better to just get immigrants from our former colonies and from uh, you know, I don't know what else to call places like the U.S. and uh, and uh, Australia. From the European perspective, these are our former colonies. Right? It doesn't. I don't mean that negatively, but you know, yeah, of course you're welcome back. You know, it's better you than. Uh, the totally alien people who share nothing, who have nothing in common with us, you know. But then again, our goal is not to overpopulate Europe. Our goal is basically more to come up with a with a livable Europe, a livable society where uh, men can be men and women can be women. We can still have children, and then we start doing interesting things like colonizing the subarctic or something to keep ourselves busy to have something to do, you know. Um, the whole idea of having a settled society where everybody is stuck in these big cities, I think that is a real problem. If you can only figure out some way to break out of the cities, you know, and, and uh, give ourselves space again, space to roam, space to travel, right? I think a lot of people want to travel more, and it's only natural if your whole life is always from point A to B, from work to home, home to work, work to home. If that's your whole life nowadays, ah, people are had enough of it. They want the the sort of freedom that moving around gives you you know and and you know strangely our earth has not been entirely colonized yet you know i mentioned the subarctic regions several times go there there's that's the new frontier we can go there and, and, and you know who who knows what what we'll find there what life we will build there you know we can have we can start building entire new towns merely out of wood and then just figure out how to live more in balance with nature you know that's what we need to do, I think, you know. <laughs> uh, someone is a proud citizen of NATO, okay. <laughs> yeah, you might call it something like that. Yeah, you might call it uh, the European Empire or something. Right? <laughs> My opinion about the Chinese Communist Party, uh, I think uh, they're extremely competent at what they do for the Chinese people, right? I think the way they do it is that billionaires in China, you're allowed to be a billionaire in China, but you have to do what the party tells you to do, right? So this is why that, uh, uh, what's the uh, what's the Chinese eBay? I forgot. <laughs> Alibaba, the CEO of Alibaba was uh, kidnapped once by the Chinese government probably. And basically to re-educate him, like, don't go too far, don't say this, don't say that, right? Uh, 
but that is interesting that in in the western world the billionaires can buy political outcome through their because they have money they, they're super packs and so on whereas in china <clears throat> the billionaires really have to do they are limited by politics by the political system so uh, that's the real a really important difference between the west and china in the west the rich people determine the outcome of elections right they buy their candidates and in the east uh you know politics rules the rich politics rules over the rich people imagine we can have something like that in the western world in the usa where an actual democratically elected group of people would be able to curb the power of the of the billionaire class and totally totally transfer the power back to the say the middle class rather than to the upper class i wonder if that's still possible in some way or not. yeah well i agree someone says china is also very corrupt yeah you know but you have to deliver yeah but chinese civilization is so very different from the west Chinese civilization, basically in the north, they have <clears throat> they have uh, grain based agriculture. In the south, they have the the rice based agriculture. That's where most of the people live, right? <clears throat> and so their entire culture is all about irrigation of water, especially for the rice fields. But Europe always had something more. We don't have rice fields. Uh, we do have grain fields, but in northern Europe, traditionally, it has always been pastoralism. We have cattle where we get milk and uh, meat from and so on. So we have a very different kind of uh, society. The whole notion of freedom, where does it come from? Well, it comes from the pastoralists, nomadic pastoralists in, in Europe, moving around from pasture to pasture. You know, and that sense of freedom that you can uh, have your cattle and um, a wagon with your utensils and all your, your gear and your kids, right? And you can bring your own water, bring your own food, and you can be free. You you can even uh, store <clears throat> if you store enough water. You can even leave the rivers behind, go inland, catch water from the rain, and so on. You can be so totally free, and that's the sort of freedom you saw when the Europeans came to North America. You know that race to the west, the wagons to the west, you know the cowboy era. That's exactly what we used to do. That's what Europeans always used to do. Our, we had our cattle, our horses, and our wagons. And we just ventured out into the open spaces to find freedom. And so in the United States in the early days, they really relived the original sense of European freedom. Yeah? But now, of course, uh, you, are, you also fall into the trap of uh, overcrowded cities, you know, and it gets stuck that way, you know. Yeah, manifest destiny is, is, is entirely European, Faustian spirit. I don't know if we need to call it manifest destiny, though. I mean, with manifestation, merely envisioning something. No, you really actually have to go out there and do it. Yeah, then, then I agree with that. Yeah, go and do it. Yeah, I don't think we will ever live under Sharia law. We will, we will not allow this. We're not going to allow this. Uh, in the worst case scenario, we will have to se segregate and separate. You know, we're just not going to do that. You know, the the difficulty is just we need to put our own people in power in the leadership, so that the common people, the normies, the NPCs, that they know what to do and what to expect. Right? You can't expect them all to be leadership, but the new leadership of Europe will have to, you know, uh, in a kind way, you know, explain it to the normal people what is going to happen. You know. And why does it have to happen? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine if Africa was full of 10 million of uh, Norwegian. Uh, <laughs> or oh, is he Swedish? I don't know. Yeah, look at the government in Ireland and the UK. They are f full of Muslim politicians now. Yeah, you're, yeah, you're being taken over in this sense, but you know. It, it it is strange why this is happening, but it's it's being done deliberately because they need they need the Pakistani and the Indian people on board uh, to try to fight China. They're trying to basically get these people away from China because the Western colonial leadership they really see China as the big threat to their power in the long term. <clears throat> All right, I've been speaking for almost two hours now, and I'm going to uh, take a break. So um, 
you can, if you want, you can go to my uh, newsletter, my Substack, is uh, uh, www.jmk.info, or you can also, I suppose, follow me on Twitter at johannesmkx, and I have a backup for my TikTok channel, which is uh, at johannesmk. So if you want to follow me there on those places, um, uh, you know, I'll op I'll upload this long video to my YouTube. Uh, so you can rewatch it there if you want to. It, 